welcome to the channel. My name is Parissa and in today's video I'm going to be doing a tour of Hampton Court Palace and the Gardens. So I hope you enjoy. I have now just come to the centre of Hampton Court Palace and I'm just looking at this stunning little fountain and there are flowers surrounded by it. It is so gorgeous. So this is what it looks like and as you can see, I'll just zoom in, that's the fountain and then you've got all of the flowers which are going around in a circle and I just really like the way that that looks. The design of it just looks very aesthetic and then you've got the building around. It all looks symmetrical to me which is what I really like as well. These flowers arranged in like the most perfect symmetrical fashion. I bought myself a lollipop from the shop before I actually got into the main entrance bit because that's at the beginning and I have to say like this is actually quite nice this is cherry flavoured 12 lollipops so if you come here you could get one I'm pretty sure this is what the Tudors would have had it's really good it definitely feels like a breeze of fresh air when like you're just outside of the fountain area because you feel the coolness of the water on you if you have a garden or something then potentially you could consider adding a fountain because it's relaxing further back view I'm now just going with my sister towards the tennis courts. Me and her are big fans of tennis. We visited Wimbledon yesterday and now we're just having a look at that and then afterwards we're going to focus more on looking at the garden and as you can see there's lots of the cone-shaped bush hedges which I really like. Quite a key characteristic of the Hampton Court gardens. What I really like about Hampton Court Palace is that they've kept the gardens tip-top condition. What it would have looked like in the Henry VIII era. It's just such a variety of plants here. It's just beautiful. The weather has luckily played up to expectations today. It's quite sunny, there is some clouds. I feel like this is the perfect kind of day to come somewhere like this because you don't have to worry about the rain. You can really just enjoy it and it's not too hot that you're just you know not able to enjoy it because of that now just come to the royal tennis court royal tennis at hampton court this is what the tennis rackets used to look like in the 1500s the ball was made of leather and filled with soft stuffing, which includes animal hair. All these boys were like ammunition, filled with clay, so it was more dangerous basically. I could take out an opponent with a simple head. Uh -huh. Real tennis is the original indoor racket sport from which the modern game of tennis is descended. It only acquired its real tag at the end of the 19th century to distinguish it from the new fangled lawn tennis. They're playing. Can you actually play? Whoa, this is so cool. Is this like an actual, their actual tennis court? Look, there's almost bounds in the green area to be a valid serve. Whoa, this kind of looks like a hybrid between squash and tennis. This is my sister. She's just modelling in this carriage, I assume this is. It looks like they've painted it. Wow, so this is the first main garden section we come to. This is absolutely stunning. Here are some orange trees. I really like this, it gives like a Mediterranean feel. And then over here you can get an even better view of this landscape garden. I just love this so much. It is gorgeous. I can't imagine what this would have been like to actually live here. This is just amazing. <laughs> Must take real skill and so much time to do this. Takes daily work 
to get the garden looking this good. I would love to like <laughs> which <would you? laughs> Crepes are still very small. So what I love about this place is that there's so many tall hidden corners. So here is another view of a subsection of the garden. And this has got like a little arch shape in the hedge. And then you can view the waterfall from a different angle and the statue and all the flowers. And that's something that I really like about this place. There is just so many different perspectives you can get from different parts of the gardens. so peaceful I'm just admiring all of the beautiful flowers here and there's lots of butterflies in this area and you can just sit down read a book this is so cool. If I had more time, I would totally just sit here and like read a book. Admire all of the wildflowers here. There's like daisies. And this is called cornflower, the purple one. And it's just so beautiful here. I can't even explain. Like this is just the kind of places that I love to go to and visit. I think there needs to be more places in the UK that have wildflowers like this in cities so that more people can just sit and relax in nature. So many little windows everywhere, which I think is so cute. I know these are um, like vines I think this is grapes and there's a whole wall full of them I think it's great that it's it just sort of looks like leaves but then when you go closer you see the grapes
gorgeous displays come a bit closer towards the landscape where the fountain is. So now I am walking through the meadow. Unfortunately, I have had to leave slightly earlier. It's just so many different colors of wildflowers here. I really think wildflowers are underrated flowers. I think there should be so many more planted just around like villages and parks and everywhere. They bring such freshness into the air. I have just come to the Van Gogh immersive experience and I've just come to the first section. I wasn't going to film this but I just decided that I wanted to because I think that Van Gogh does a lot of flower paintings and that's sort of related to my channel. Um, so the first stop is about the vases that Van Gogh painted and I think they're so beautiful. I feel like he's more well known for doing his iris paintings but he also does like rose paintings which are really beautiful so I'll just show you what that looks like now. As you can see there is his rose painting and then his iris painting. And I really like all of his vase paintings. I think they're really iconic and they're really good as like prints as well. I would say my favourite out of these four would be the roses one right here. I just really like the green colours and the whites together. But then I also really like the iris one as well. So interestingly, Van Gogh towards the end of his life was suffering from mental breakdowns and that is why he did his sunflower and iris paintings and he was just exploring with rose bouquets and iris bouquets um, and then it just became like very iconic.
it's a more secure burglar proof. Japanese vase with roses and anemones, 1890. It's 3D. <laughs> oh, look at that. Still life vase with 15 sunflowers, 1889. I suppose maybe when he got more depressed, he saw things in, more, in a more dark way. Yeah. Bars with red poppies. Oh, I love that. Bars with gladioli. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Bars with hollyhocks. Yes. I saw some actually the other day. I should have taken a photo of some. Oh, look at that. Bars of zinnias. Do you know them? Yes, I know who the zinnias are. Oh, they're the orange ones. Still life bars with irises against a yellow background. Ooh. Oh my god, look at that. Look at that. Oh my god. Imperial fritillaries in a copper vase. 1887. I love the, the blue yeah, background with the white the dots. Yeah, like dot. Oh, bars with myosotis and peonies. Bars with zinnias and other flowers. Oh, he loved flowers. He did. Me and him are quite similar in that sense. Vase with peonies, 1886. Oh god, look at that. It does give you that sort of like eerie vibe though. Cineraria in a flower pot. Someone's done like 50 paintings of flowers. <laughs> I think he did more than that. More. Oh wow, vision vase of flowers, 1900. Nice colours, colours. Still life with meadow flowers and roses. Vase of gladioli and carnations. So dark. 1886 seems very dark. Lilacs, daisies, and anemones. Vincent. Pink that roses in a vase. That is my favourite so far. Three sunflowers. 
Christmas in a vase. That's how iconic. I don't know what rose mallows are, a special variety. I need to look them up. I like how it just. In the last 10 years of his life, he made an average of 36 hours. Lilies. You don't like this. What actually is it? What's this thing? Is it a clown? Let's go over here. This is part one. Just come to do some colouring and of course I chose to do a flower. <laughs> I chose to do the sunflowers painting and I'm gonna try and create the best masterpiece I can by colouring this in. now finished my Van Gogh interpretation of his sunflower painting so yeah it took quite a long time um, but yeah it's good fun and then you can sign your name at the end and then you can put your artwork on the wall and then you can also put it on the little screen over there so this is the one that I did
the Sunflower series. Hello, so I have just gone on the Elizabeth line on the underground in London for the first time and I have to say it is so good, it's so quick, so modern, it just feels really smooth when you go down and I have just got myself to the new garden, well it's like a rooftop garden at the top of the Canary Wharf line when you get off the first stop of the Elizabeth line from Whitechapel and it's just so gorgeous here, like it feels really refreshing and really modern which is like why I really like it so I'll just give you a little tour of it you enter the canary wolf roof garden it says cross rail place and because essentially this is like a cross rail rooftop garden and outside you can see a view of canary wolf so this is one view but I will give you a tour of the whole thing just in case if you you're ever considering coming here and then you know what you're getting yourself into these are white anemones. I really like this colour for summer and spring. It looks like there are lots of different types of trees here. There is the golden bamboo.
luckily it is a nice sunny bright day it feels really open here and it also smells really clean which is quite expected since surrounded by lots of greenery but here is another sign and just discussing the spices and how um, the most valuable spices brought to the uk were cloves and peppercorns as well as nutmeg <laughs> 